What's up everyone? I'm Mark Winchester from Winchester Metalworks and today we're going to go over basic AC settings setting up your new Everlast machine. So today we're going to take a look at the Lightning MTS-275. The first setting that I would take a look at is the pre-flow. So I like to set my pre-flow for about 0.2 seconds prior to the arc start. Setting your pre-flow is important to getting the gas ahead of the arc. So you have a little bit of gas flow before the arc starts. If you're starting your weld and you're getting black sitting or tungsten is bluing or blacking, you're getting contamination. So the next setting we're gonna go over is post-flow. So having post flow is protecting the tungsten after the weld is complete. So this is important so you don't contaminate your tungsten. The next setting we're gonna take a look at is AC settings. With the MTS-275, we have three different waveforms. We got square wave, soft square wave, and triangle wave. These different waveforms have different characteristics depending on what you're welding from thick to thin material. Balance is the relationship between electro-positive and electro-negative. The higher the number, the greater the cleaning. The lower the number, the more penetration. So the next setting we're gonna go over is the frequency. So setting the frequency is a preference-based setting. So if you like a firm puddle, go up on the frequency. If you like a real flowy, easy moving puddle, you go down on the frequency. There is a rule of thumb as the, the material thickness goes up, the frequency goes down. You don't want to run a real high frequency on thick material. And the reason for this is you're not going to get that fluidity in the puddle that you need to move the thicker material. So for a frequency setting, let's say on 090, I'll run the frequency at about 150 hertz. This helps to focus the, the arc when the amperage is down low. When you're up in amperage, you really don't need that arc focus. So when I weld quarter inch material, I'm gonna lower the frequency down to about 90 to 100 hertz to kind of help flow the puddle, help move it along. Today we're gonna be welding eighth inch 5052. So I'm gonna set the frequency at 130 hertz. So it's gonna have a nice fluid puddle and it's gonna be firm as well. I generally like to set my amperage a little bit high. Um, the reason why I do this is because I like to establish my puddle instantly. So where a lot of new people when they weld aluminum is they set the amperage for the weld. You'll see that they'll have a cold start and then it'll have a nice sweet spot in the middle where it's flowing good and all of a sudden it's too hot. So what happens is they're waiting for the, the puddle to establish. So what this does is it heat soaks the part. So what you want to do is you want to get the, the arc established instantly as quick as possible and then you want to get the weld moving and you want to stay ahead of the heat. So being able to stay ahead of the heat, you're able to control the heat in front of you. So for eighth inch aluminum, I'm going to set the machine at 230 amps. And this is going to help me establish the puddle instantly so I can get my weld moving. So 230 amps does sound like a lot. But it's like owning a Ferrari. Just because it can go 200 miles an hour doesn't mean that you have to. But knowing that you can go 200 miles an hour and having that power there helps a lot on aluminum. So we're going to run a butt weld and we're going to want to initiate the puddle as quickly as possible and get moving to stay ahead of the heat. You got to watch your torch angle on aluminum because when you come in with the filler, you have too much torch angle, the arc's going to start hitting the filler and you're going to melt the filler before you ever get it to the puddle. You gotta keep a tight arc length. The tighter the arc length, the, the more heat you're gonna get into the part. So a few things that you wanna look for when reading your weld is the oxide cleaning line. If it's real choppy and, and not smooth, not a consistent line, you might have a, too much gas CFH. Too high of a gas CFH will really make the, the gas erratic when it intermingles with the arc. The other thing is knowing when you're hot enough. Look at the toes of the weld. You can really see how the toes of the weld are wet in real nice. So if you have a real hard edge right here, you're not hot enough yet. On the bead spacing, I really like to keep at least a 50% overlap of bead spacing. So 
If you're spacing your beads too far out, what can happen is you can create a stress riser in between the beads and that stress riser in the end will turn into a crack. So having the right amount of overlap with your bead spacing is really important. So now that we're done with the butt weld, we're gonna move on to a fillet weld. Once I establish the puddle and I get moving, I pay attention to the size of the weld that I'm doing and then the consistent heat of the puddle. You read the puddle as you're welding and, then, and you make changes depending on how the puddle's reacting. So if you introduce the filler and that puddle is a little bit cold, then you can ramp up the amperage control or you can slow down a little bit to allow that filler metal to wet in a little bit more. So there's three ways that you can control the temperature of the weld. One is with the amperage control, the foot pedal. Two, travel speed, and how many times you're introducing the filler. When you introduce the filler, it actually cools the weld puddle. Having that ability to cool it really determines on how you're feeding the filler. If you're leaving the filler really close to the arc, the arc's gonna start preheating the filler and you're gonna lose that ability to cool the puddle. So when you're reading your fillet weld, look, once again, looking at your toes of the weld, make sure that they're wet in properly. I like a real tight bead spacing. So on a fillet weld, it's gonna take more heat and more filler material to get the right size weld that you're trying to achieve. So going up a filler size to, let's say, a 332nd filler would be more ideal to running a fillet to get the proper amount of fill that you need. So this fillet weld here on 8th inch 5052 was done with 332, 53, 56 filler, 230 amps. Once again, I'm not using all the amperage. I'm just using it to help flow the puddle. 30% balance and 130 hertz on the frequency and we're running square wave. So that was basic settings and techniques for a fillet. Let's move on to an open corner. So with an open corner, it's gonna naturally take less heat than a fillet. So with the open corner, I'm gonna drop down from a 332 filler down to a 1 16th. It's gonna help me wet out the filler easier so I can reduce heat input. I lowered the amperage a little bit because the open corner is gonna take less heat than a fillet weld. Some of the things you can change, you can, you can increase the frequency to help stabilize the arc, but where I have it, it's kind of like a nice neutral point where I get a nice flowing puddle and it's not too firm. If you have the frequency too high, the, the puddle doesn't wanna move. You want to be able to flow the puddle and keep it moving forward. So we can go from like 130 to 150 and we'll still have that nice flowing puddle. Uh, the balance, I didn't move the balance, we're still 30%. If we went up in material thickness, I'd start moving the, the balance down to get more penetration so we can get down into the material. A few tips I would, I would give for someone that's just starting out is hood time is really important. You know, uh, a lot of people, see these welds and stuff like that on Instagram and they have a tendency to get inspired but at the same time like they struggle with you know getting to that level um, it takes time you know I've been doing this for a little over 18 years at a professional level so um, that being said you know just stay at it don't get discouraged educate yourself I'm Mark Winchester with Winchester Metalworks Weld mean, weld green.